and welcome to my workshop. It may remind you of Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, but the difference is that in my workshop the persons can walk and talk. I'm a Swedish impersonator. These wigs are my tools. This is where the celebrities are made up. This is where fame starts or ends. You see, this is former President Nixon's note which points us to the subject of the show, the makeup of a president, from a Swedish point of view. Did you know that the Swede, John Hansen, was the president of the first American government? Did you know that the Viking by the name of Leif Erikson discovered America a long time before Columbus' voyage? And, uh... uh excuse me, sir. Uh, did you call me? Lieutenant Columbus? Well, I was talking about Christopher Columbus. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I'm sorry if I disturbed you, sir. I'm very sorry. Mm. I don't mind. <laughs> Speaking of... Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Parnovic. Uh, um, um, do you mind if I ask a question? Please do. Um, it's a very important question. Uh, I hope it is. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, sir, but um, one of your wigs is missing. It is? Do you mind if I look around? Oh, please go ahead, Mr. Colombo. Um, what about this wig, sir? Uh, That's Dean Martin's wig. Oh, uh, my wife likes him very much. Um, my wife likes him, too. And that one belongs to Liberace. Oh, uh, my wife also likes him very much. That's J.R. Ewing's hat. Uh, my wife, uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's Richard Nixon. <laughs> uh, may I ask you, sir, uh, do you do impersonations, Mr. Panovic? Right, sir. Uh, that's my job. Oh, uh, I see, sir. Uh, that means, um, I've got you. Under my skin. Thank you, Mr. Colombo. My wife likes this very much. 1984 is not only a novel, it's also a year when the President of the United States is elected. And I wonder if an actor can be elected President, why not an impersonator? As a matter of fact, I am the only impersonator in the whole world who can do Ronald Reagan with a Swedish accent. But I haven't made up my mind yet if I want to run for president. First, I want to sneak into President Reagan and see what inside information I can get. Oh, my Ronald had a face, E-R-U-R-O. That my makeup will replace E-I-E-I-O Painting dark, I suppose, makes a smaller nose Rouge on the cheek makes him less antique Than he was some years ago E-I-E-I-O Oh, my Ronald needs no wig E-I-E-I-O I wonder if my ears too big E-I-E-I-O Just some spray in the hair Nothing gray anywhere Fancy Nancy's big wig Don't need no wig On old MacRonald On his way To C-I-C-I-A <laughs> on a star how I wonder there you are oh Mark Ronald in disguise e-i-e-i-o need some eyes of a smaller size e-i-e-i-o with my brows too high that's the reason why with a little frown I will pull them down 
now we need his smile, you know. E -I -E -I -O. <laughs> Mr. President, this is a show for Swedish television, and I would like to know your opinion of the Swedish socialist leader, Olof Palme, who has acted as a mediator in a war between Iran and Iraq. Well, I thought you knew my opinion of communists. <laughs> yes, but Mr. Palme is no communist. He's almost an anti-communist. I don't care what kind of communist he is. <laughs> uh, have you met Mr. Palme? I never forget a face. <laughs> I met him once. That's enough for me. Tell me, sir, is it a tough job to be the president? Um, well, um, in the morning, I'm very busy sleeping till 10 o'clock. Uh, then I have breakfast until 11. Uh, then I go riding for a couple of hours. Then I have lunch, a little nap. And at 4 o'clock, I have to see Nancy. <laughs> in the evening, I always try to rest in order to be able to meet next day's demands of this tough job. Well, that sounds like a nice job. Uh, what about your foreign policy? Um, have you talked to Mr. Brezhnev about peace in the Middle East? Yes, uh, we've had a discussion about peace in the Middle East. Uh, but the problem is that President Brezhnev wants too big a peace on the Middle East. <laughs> When I asked him to get out of Afghanistan, he said that uh, he didn't even know uh, how to get out of Russia. <laughs> and uh, when we talked about disarmament, he said that he already had disarmed Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and now he was also going to disarm Poland. <laughs> which means that the military buildup has to continue. Um, and there the Soviet Union has a big advantage. They don't have to spend a lot of money fighting communism. <laughs> and the reason why we're also increasing our military buildup is that uh, we were too late for the First World War. We came late into the second, but next time we're going to be there from the start. Regarding your social program, you're being criticized for taking money from the poor and the old and giving it to the rich uh, and spending it on weapons like the neutron bomb. Well, uh, being rich in America today is very expensive. Uh, and I've always loved the poor people. And that's why I want to see so many of them. Uh, you also mentioned the old people. Well, once upon a time, I was old too. So I really know what that means. Yes, but isn't the new Trump bomb too risky for mankind? Uh, not if we use it in a constructive way. Yes, but a neutron bomb costs a lot of money. Wouldn't it be better if you gave it to the poor people? Well, uh, no, because I don't think that poor people know how to handle a neutron bomb. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, by the way, what about your advice? <laughs> well, uh, I didn't know I had advice. I mean the jelly beans that you forgot at in Martin's house last night. Who can renovate the thing that Carter did so wrong? 